Hello and welcome back to Pillars. We are just about to go down into another dimension. From the Inguitan Way Station level 3. Where our luminous address source is corrupted. Corrupted by what? We don't know. Project your part into the pillar. Yep. And uh, this uh, particular other pillar <coughs> was fueled by the sacrifices. Well, not willing sacrifices, but the sacrifices of a lot of souls. People got killed here. And that's how we... How the adder was luminous. Sparkly. A force within the Adra tugs your soul from your body and into the a realm of pure essence. You become aware of a fragmented, dreamlike landscape. It is not a physical place, but rather a shape your mind has formed from the teeming energy. So is your present so is your presence in it. I got an itch. Can someone scratch my elbow? I lift it with my body. Your actual body is still in Pukukuhara. You feel the cold tiles beneath it and smell the dusty air around it, but you cannot return to it. Something here has hold on you. Has a hold on you. The voices you heard outside the pillars scream and wail somewhere close by. <clears throat> I hear you. Who the hell are you? These guys. Target practice? You reach the source of the tumult, a festering mass of corruption. Hundreds of souls cry out within it, trapped and twisted by the accumulating decay. That is not a good way to go. Yeah, it looks, looks a bit odd. Like, that part. <sighs> A handful of souls, still fresh and mostly whole, surface to conf confront you. One of them separates out from the others and stares you down with grin, uh, hateful intensity. You do not belong here. Try and kick me out. I see myself out then. He shakes his head slowly, upsetting a flurry of essence that scatters to the eater. We are the dead. Yep. His voice hits in your mind like a clapper to the bell. We're talking to a lost soul? Hold on, before you say any more, look into the light of my lantern. That's not gonna work. You're not- stop playing X-Men. <clears throat> I'm not X-Men, uh... Oh, what? Man in black. Damn, sorry. You- you distracted me. <clears throat> Eager, she raises the lantern high, shaking it back and forth to scatter the light around in a skittering dance. He bares his teeth at her and squints as a trickle of essence leaves his body. When he looks away, the trickle stops. Maybe you're dead. I do not see Tangaloa's mouth or Sirono's doors anywhere. A second form takes shape near the first and glovers at him. Their essence sharpen and flicker at each other. My storm wreathes Pococahara. Ngati's fist drags Valiant ships to the deep. If you come to stop this, you have already failed. His form gathers definition. Whether or not his words are true, he believes what he's saying. You're responsible for the storms? How? Ngati holds our souls in this swamp, cut off from the sea. The flow of essence stops here. He gazes out at the sh shifting scenery beyond your floating platform of what only resembles stone. And rocks, apparently. She wrinkles her nose at the putrefying mass and checks under the, her boots. What do you mean, rocks? Souls are going bad cut off from the cycle? My lantern looks fine and healthy, though. I don't claim to understand it, girl. I'm a miner, not a mystic. She aims a hard glare at Anaharu. The cistern overflows into the world of the living, stirring the sea and skies with the fury of the goddess. Bringing storms. His lips curve into a slight smile. Blinking Maya clears her throat and eases in closer to listen. There's nothing divine about broken machinery under, around an Adra pillar. The gods laugh at machines, I say. 
Nothing built of Kith hands can rest away their will. In spite of his words, he regards the corruption over his shoulder with a frown. No souls travel through here. The Adra screams. Ngati grins, showing her fangs. This is where Valiant's scheming ends. Ngati's servant holds the dam closed to flood the living world with her vengeance. Pushing out Vale only exchanges the trading post for Rautaian warships. Be sure, they'll do anything to, to protect an investment. <clears throat> Though you are only holding a mental projection of the pages, Anaharu peers down at them and absorbs their meaning. He turns his gaze toward Beza. Don't look at me! You report to your fish goddess and I report to Songreta Mia Compressa. Anaharu silences her with a glare. I am the storm of my ah, people. Come on. Adra is the staff I wave to churn Ngati's kingdom. The problem is I have little patience for this religious stuff. He opens his palm. The editor around you reacts at once, whipping out the ambient essence into a frenzy. Far away you think you can hear furious winds growing in response. Madiko, to arrive at the far side of death and find this babbling brook. She presses her temples with both hands. The Valians will not overrun us while I have the strength to repel them. Why not let the, your villagers defend themselves? I know they cannot. I am the spear they can hurl at the outsiders. Pirates and slavers drove my tribe from our old roots and havens. Now, the Valians do the same with paper. They come to pull Adra from the earth and mill it like grain. Talk on Plankinet. You have your story and I have mine. There is nothing more to say. Here at the end, outsider lies are a dull edge. I could destroy this Adra. The Valians would have nothing here. They would find some other horror to visit upon Tikawara. This I know. I... He seems ready to dismiss your words, but then winces, glancing away toward the dealer. This Adra, the broken machine. Do you speak truth? I feel no gods here. I can only speak for Berat, who isn't around. The Adra. This is my prison. And yours is the first sane voice to speak through the bars. He squeezes either side of his head as if to repress a deep pounding. Wow. Someone is recognizing my points. Oh boy. I try not to take that personally. Don't. Would you destroy it? Let no Valian hands touch the Adra. Then you send me on to another life. The skin crinkles at the corners of his eyes. Do not listen to him, friend. We both know the Islander has no idea how much a shard of this prison is worth. I didn't come here to negotiate with spirits. I think yes, I don't consider that a solution. You can't just destroy whatever of value you have. In a way he was right, you know, he, you can't just destroy everything of value you have. If anything, this could have been the opportunity to uplift this tribe or whoever lives here. <clears throat> I won't do it. This place has driven you mad. No. I didn't come here to negotiate with spirits. Then I will scatter you to the ether and fatten the storm on your past lives. He balls his hands at his side and begins to shift closer. Akosi, let's not be hasty. Some of us still have bodies out there. She puts up a hand in protest and glances to the souls of her crew. You don't plan on staying here, huh? Why not let us tag along and see if we can reunite with our... what we left behind? 
It doesn't work that way, you already gone. It never ends well when you stuff myth match essence into one body. I'll see if there is one anything I can what? If there is anything I can do to help once I leave this place. No deal, abomination. <laughs> I just kill them all. I swear the things I do for the Sangretta. She sighs and presses her brow before turning her focus back toward the Juana. Anaharu, I think we finally agree on something. Let's tear this Botso's soul apart. <clears throat> yeah, I wouldn't be too eager to do that. If I were you guys. Retarget it slightly. Let's drop another one. So, probably we can loot them. You subdue the furious souls, ripping them into modes of uh, their cons constituent essence. Beyond this cloud of essence, you feel the pull of the cycle, a force that steadily increases. This pillar remains steadfastly blocked from the natural flow. Power still hums through the essence, sending it through the cycle would just restore the Adra around you. Fragmenting it would detonate the delicate balance of power, destroying the pillar. Either way, the steady tug of the beyond grows. You must decide quickly. <clears throat> Return to the natural flow of essence to the Adra, restoring its luminosity. I think we need that. You push the essence through the widening channel to the beyond. They churn and spin away. Suddenly the either around you develops into a churning maelstorm. You pull yourself back toward your body before the force rips your soul away. Can we no proceed? Oh, is this the way out? <clears throat> you cling to the tether of your soul, racing to the safety of the material world as the immaterial one warps around you. Essence floods to the newly restored Adra, filling it with a light and heat that is both agonizing and rapturous. You return to your body, feeling as though you've just fallen into it from a mountain top. Your companions gasp and groan beside you. You cover your face again, it's the, the light radiating from the restored Adra. Okay. We can report the progress, but like, I didn't restore it. For them, I restored it for myself. This is my other pillar, by the way. So we can go back to the Imperial Command at the Brass Citadel. And we can also go back to the Trading Company headquarters at Queen's Birth. Uh, can we leave this place? We should be able to leave it right there. <clears throat> run, guys, run! Run fast! And we still need to see what the hell is going on at Tikawara. The game does have a very cool, cool soundtrack. So, ahoy mateys, I hope you're ready for an adventure. So, seems like we only have Tikavara at Southeast. Pokokuhara, yeah. So we're gonna go toward Tikawara. Be able to check that out. Then, we only have Northeast to, to deal with after that. And there's, there wasn't a lot of thing to do at uh, 
at southeast whatsoever. Not at all. Alright. I just go. Tikawara. So just as a quick reminder. Uh what's going on at Tikawara? Do we have uh So we have this. Report my progress to either Atsura or Governor Alvari. Yeah. We can tell them about the the Adra. Return to Barati. O'Hara's bounty is ready to reclaim. Bahari can be found the upper floor of the palace to serve his crown in Kataka. Yeah. We need to map Tikawara. Don't we have any missions to at Tikawara? Hmm. We also need to go to Hurama. But I don't know if even know where that is. I'm pretty sure that we have not been to Harama yet. <clears throat> Alright, Tikawara. I wonder if we're gonna see better merchants because uh, the kind of merchants we are running into are somewhat like Luster. He's so far. Here and there we buy uh, a good gear. Most of the time I just, uh... Well, I don't know. I guess I'm just holding on to the gear I have right now. I don't really mind just finding the stuff. That I think that's uh, the most fun part. <clears throat> Tikawara, midwinter apparently. What the hell is going on here? As you near the dock, voices roar over the din of uh, the waves. It seems as if the entire village has gathered, and many of them don't seem happy. I hope that's not for us. Hey guys, what's up? I'm just passing by. They argue with one another, pointing into the distance, but at your approach, they turn to stare at you, their eyes wide with apprehension or anticipation. The crowd parts for the Ranga, whose grin is as broad as his shoulders. My fishermen saw your boat sailing from Pokokohara. The storms, they parted like a school of fish before Nagati herself. Okay, you're welcome. Now, the Valian Trading Company will send ships, people, and supplies. Tikawawa will be the greatest port east of Nekataka. That's my thinking as well. Those souls were lost, and but you guys gotta uh, get get a big piece of the, the pie and use that Luminous Adra too. To become a true power. First they must clear room for docks and storehouses. But that will be many months from now, no? The dwarf wipes his brow, considering the beach and the half-finished, half-painted huts built along it. The young priestess glares with open malice. The angles of her crossed arms and clenched jaw as sharp as daggers. Already they make plans. If that's how I should be going... I say this is a turn in our fortunes. The first of many. Actually, you guys look fairly useless, so... Like, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, those guys just decided, like... You know what? I don't feel like sharing with these guys. And they just kill you all. <clears throat> you are always welcome among us. Accept this and know our thanks. Wow. Okay. Thanks for that spear. I'm gonna put it right up your... Uh, I mean, in my bag. <clears throat> Uh, the others nod and disperse, murmuring to one another as they scatter across the village. Bugger off. Well, they all left. Okay, uh... Sure. You're welcome among us. Oh, what? We know about their entire village? Quit your chirping. I have no fish for you. <laughs> I don't need no fish. Oh, filthy lizards. Even here I always smell them. It could be just the sea. <sighs> you probably smelled the fish. Step back, all of you. What? Who the hell are you? The broad-shouldered Amana at the center of the 
Huddle takes a cautious step back, his gaze never breaks from the tribesmen who have him surrounded, and his hands never stray from, from his weapon. You've all got the wrong idea. I'm waiting for a shipment of sailcloth from the homeland. Is that going to be a problem? His expression turns stony as the implied threat crosses her, his lips. Then what say you about this? Coded gibberish, or I'm an Orlin. Someone from the crowd tosses a sheaf of papers to the ground by Harama's feet. The assembled tribesmen mutter to their assent. Damn it. He's about two seconds away from starting a brawl. I've got to step in. Oh, this is the guy! Harama! I follow your lead. She clears her throat loud enough to turn heads in the direction of your party. One against a mob isn't exactly even. Ever heard of a fair fight? No! Oh, this is what you want! Maya cracks her knuckles and rolls her shoulders. Ha! Company warships blow our canoes to splinters and you call us unfair? You foreign imps are all the same. Turning to you and Maya, Harama gives away no recognition of other than a flicker of gratitude. Ah, uh, what seemed to be the problem here? As surely as sharks circle spilled blood, this one has been casting an unwelcome shadow on our village. Right. One of the villagers steps forward and gestures to Harama. We found coded documents in his quarters and he defended himself with lies, outsider spy. Uh, what makes you think it's anything nefarious? Because Rawatai hungers after these isles like a tiger lurking in the tall grass and wetting its chops. But you're probably right. If you townies are dumb enough to go blundering into an alpha predator, you deserve what's coming to you. Come on, man. Come on, Maya. Alpha you're calling Karam an alpha predator? Who are you to speak in his defense? And who is your traitor friend who postures like she is not one of us? I'm the one who's going to bring the Brat of Berat down in your heads. Maya, care to elaborate? I've got better things to do than listen to a bunch of islanders argue over who wants to die first. The crowd flitches back from Maya, and their spokesperson raises a hand. A Hwana who speaks for agents of Rawatai is no friend of the tribes. She and her bird will share in his fate. I don't really know what I'm going to... I'm, uh, well, don't know that I'm going to walk away from this. How certain are you? <laughs> Bluff and intimidation. You're making this choice. I'm warning you to back away. That's rational as well. This is intimidation and bluff. Should we intimidate them? That could escalate things. You're making this choice. I'm warning you to buck back away. We will show the trading companies how we deal with Rawatayan spies. Charge, brothers and sisters! We got trouble. Bad choice. Well, you're dead now. Rama almost died. Hey, Barua, you wanna die too? Let's go. See that beauty of a hit, Maya? You try to avoid making a spectacle of yourself, and someone forces your hand. I don't think you should stay after this uh, <coughs> incident. Now, here is a welcome sight. He turns to face Maya and smile brightens his features. Is that little Ashiza? Hop over here, you old terror! Harama opens his arms and Maya's bird darts enthusiastically closer, pecking at Harama's shins. Ishi town. You don't know where he's been. Can I get an introduction? Captain, this is Harama. We were shipmates on the Flying Buttress. Is that so? She nods to him, their eye contact lingering an extra moment. That's a word for it. You could also say we were... Loyal servants of the homeland. That's enough out of you. What? 
Come on, I already got the message. Maya touches her brow and uh, shakes her head, hiding the hint of a smile. Afraid this isn't a social visit. This comes <clears> from up high. <throat> she passes him a roll of parchment. His demeanor hardens at the moment he unseals the missive, warming his tongue over his teeth. Rama lifts up the parchment to view it against a light source. Atsura's up to his tricks again, I see. Thank you, Maya. I've been waiting for this. That sounds malicious. Maya, why is she asking? Arma squints at you, hesitating to say more. Captain, later. I promise we can discuss it later. Okay. I guess we're done here. It's been, <clears throat> well, sort of like old times. In a good way. Maya grins, planting her hands on her hips. Especially seeing you coming and going again. When the dust settles, maybe we could... I... Uh... Maya rubs the back of her head, uh, her gaze wandering over to you. His eyes widen with surprise and he grins, offering a congratulatory... Congratulatory... Oh, whatever! Not to you both. Say no more. Good luck in your travels and... <laughs> other adventures great Ashiza, you keep your feathers clean i need to check in with atsura mind if we take a detour to the brass citadel well i guess no problem appreciate it atsura probably wants to make sure i'm not wasting too many resources on his little errand nothing to worry about okay we found harama which was uh not an island but actually a guy Oh, don't steal. But it's nice that uh, when you open one thing up, uh, you just, well, it's, it's not considered stealing at that point. Uh, you can just uh, get away from it. Just in case you accidentally like, click on it. Amir's winds blow bitter today. The gods give answers. It is only my duty to listen. Give her Bezos pages. You were right to be wary of the valiance. Uh, she takes the pages and examines them. Her fingers crawl down the text as she's reading slowly, but her eyes are widening with understanding and horror. And the ring has sold us to these sea snakes. <clears throat> she smooths her hand down, her long skirt to... Still, they're sh shaking? Thank you for this warning. But for what did you bring this to me? No reason. I was hoping for a reward. Then take this and be repaid. You don't seem to think much of uh, Renau's leadership. He is our Ranga. My own great aunt looked into his soul and declared him such. Sounds like a legit fate to make someone leader till he dies. I must respect him. Even as he builds a village for our enemies. Sounds good. Have you tried reasoning with him? Oh, flight their back jacket. Akira, I have, and so did Anna. She breaks off, looking down and frowning. That name is cast off. Forget I said it. What's the problem? It is not spoken of. I, I <clears throat> apologize. That just seems like a dumb question. Are you the priestess of the tribe? She nods, one finger brushing the crescent pendant at her at her neck. We worship the same gods as the foreigners, but sometimes with different names. This is Nagati, the trickster of the seas. You worship Gon same as I do, at least in Nekitaka. But I'll admit I've never called Andra Nagati. Okay. Foreigners know her as Andra. To us, there is no difference. You killed the Valian explorers. I found this cursed idol among their things. Oh! I warned them not to go. I warned Ruanu not to help them. Her fingers close around the very coral crescent at her neck. Foreign <clears throat> ships raided our old villages and carried away our people. Ruanu promised us we would be safe here. The twine bites a deep furrow into her neck as she pulls at the crescent pendant. Her eyes search yours. Give it to me, please. 
then I will see that it brings no harm to anyone else. She holds out her hand and levels a s steely glare at you. How many times do you suppose she's used that line? I won't give it to you, Nairi. Nairi meets the gaze of the Amana nearest her. The skin pales, but she remains steadfast. I do not want to shed blood, but I will do what I must to protect my people. The idol, then. People died. I won't let you cover it up. Then I do as I must. Ready to roll. You deserve to die. I didn't attack her because she was a murderer. Oh, I've been caught stealing. Oh. I'm terribly sorry about that. I thought we were done with this place and we were just <clears throat> taking the the goodies this place has to offer. Hey Kuaru Hut. Uh where, where's the leader? Chieftain's hut. Kuaru, do we have a trader in this place? That would be nice. You're welcome among us. Wrongy. The Salmon a man seems lost in thought. His clothes are neat and clean, but he's tugging on the fringe of his sh uh, sash, which he's uh, worded into a long, loose thread. He looks up at you, his blurry eyes suddenly sharp and alert. What say? You are new to Tikawar? What do you do here? I weave baskets and mats, strong and soft, just as my mother's cousin taught me. Really boring. In the afternoon, I will go to the trading post to sell them. Pretty boring. Of course. All that I earn goes back to the Ranga first. This is price share. I don't know about price share. <laughs> price share? Ikira, we trust in our Ranga to dispense our food, goods, and coin to the tribe. The Mataru get the best of all, and then the Kwaru. The Raparu share what is left among themselves. Sounds pretty unfair to me. Mukumu sees to it that Tamau is made an example of what breaking price share looks like. What do you do here? I weave baskets in the app, of course. All that I earn Farewell. goes... Farewell. So... If I collapse, Great. just drag me on a rope. And also, apparently the Ruparu is, uh... What? You mean the grave dirt? I wonder if I took to worship in Andra, if she could make me forget what I just heard. Sure. <clears throat> and Ruparu is left to die in extreme, uh, uh, cases, apparently. Like, oh, when there's no food, then the Ruparu just does not get food. So, that is just, that's really... Bad system. Oh, trading post? Wait a second, did I check this out? I didn't check this out. I think I was running around here, but I didn't talk to Himuihi. Stop. An outsider in Tiquara? Who are you, stranger? The Vading Trading Company wants me to look after their investments. I'm the watcher. A captain. If you had sailed downwind of the island, you would have moved on, I say. I tell Ranga Ruanu that the stench of Tikawara will drive away friend and outsider alike. Do you smell it? My friends here promised they bathed before we left port. <laughs> oh, come on. You know I only wash up on Sundays. I speak of the Lagu Fath. There is no food on this barren island that those monsters do not steal. Right? Yeah, but... How could you say no to those little faces? Always they circle our village looking for weaknesses. I push the cage with the young ones farther toward the beach, but I smell them even here. It's no wonder they come here when the beach smells like a uh, Lagufat hatchery. Better to keep them under our thumb than sharpening blow darts, I say. A week ago, I tracked the fish to Hoina Ravine, so I challenged the Mataru to a hunting competition. My mother's belt? For the brood mother's head. It is not every day that newcomers land on our beaches. What say you show me how outsiders deal with Lagufath? Sounds fun. Understand they are animals. You must rely on blades, I say. 
not words. Hunting tales of our ancestors say the brood will scatter when their fish Ranga is killed. No need to chase the children if you cut the head from the mother. What? What are you doing with this shipwreck? The Ranga wanted a trading post. He said it will bring more Valians like the sweaty dwarf. Then they will bring food and supplies and their sweaty money. What's wrong with that? Always I stand here. This is no job for the Mataru. We hunt, fight, and lead. Looks like you're supervising. Someone must. So why aren't you hunting or fighting? What is there to hunt on this heap of rock and moss? No game, only Lagofath skulking in Hoina Ravine. Even the antelope know there is no fit home. The grasses are thin and the trees are like a child's bones. Small and soft. Even to build this, we must hike up the mountain for wood. Can I buy some supplies? Am I a Kuaru? Do I dirty my fingers with coins a thousand hands have touched? Never. Go see the sweaty one, the dwarf. He washes his hands sometimes. Great! Uh, <clears throat> Where's the sweaty one? So we're looking for a sweaty dwarf who is... Probably in the Chieftain's Hut because we explored everything else, unless he's there. Alright. Uh, hey. I'm looking for a sweaty dwarf. You guys know where I can find ah, one? I know this might sound like, uh, sound like an odd, uh, request, but, you know. One day soon, this will be a busy port. You have done a great thing for us. Thank you. Give him Bez's pages. The Valians would have harvested your souls to use the machines in Pokukuhara. His expression wavers between humor and confusion. He doesn't know what to make of this, and he's clearly afraid of misinterpreting you. For what do you say these things? Can you read Valian? Let me see. As surely as my fingers are webbed. He laughs too loudly and holds up a hand for you to wait. He continues. Gla glazing back at you as the pages through the record uh, for records you get the feeling he's contemplating you much more than the papers in his hands at least his size is there a way to make these letters a little bit bigger Let a little bit bigger that would be nice you would not say this if it were not so i do not understand why or how the valians would do such a thing but i will be cautious Got it. It is good that you bring this to me quietly. My people trade enough rumors and fears for twice their number. Don't worry. I already killed your high priestess. You're welcome. Whatever you need, you must only ask. Where can I find supplies? The Valians left many crates with the dwarf. He hoards them by the beach. Got but it. But we never refuse a guest. If you need sleep, Himuihi will show you all the villagers contending for the honor of your visit. And if you need strong Mataru warriors to fight at your side, then Himuihi can help you with this also. She guards the trading post. Thanks. Say later, uh, Rangu, Ra Ranu. What a name. So, there's a dwarf on the beach. And also we have a mission to take out some creepy, but somewhat cute, Langa fat or whatever that is. Where are you? Oh, abandoned cat. We managed to actually find that. Where is he? Okay. Near some crates. On the beach. Dwarfs. It's not Pekeho. Full tides. Why are those Langu Langu fat caged? Himwihi and the other Mataru found them when they explored the island. Said maybe we train them to build. <laughs> And if the soil and sea are misers here, then we eat them. Well, plan B and plan A, great. A swabby on a sorcerer once suggested we dine on fish man, mate. Not an ant complained when Romoro put him off at the next port. <laughs> but can you tell me about Tikavara? The high tide is stingy with fish. And the low tide even more so. Great. I guess we can't talk to the hatchling. 
Dwarf, where the hell are you? Are you on the port? Oh, Vector? Oh. Soon the director will send supplies and immenses and soldiers. Right. Unless uh, you have room on your ship. I need supplies. The captain left all but the essentials with me. I have sustained myself trading with the villagers. Ecosi, but I'm almost out of ale. Hmm. Ranged accuracy and... What the hell is that? That sounds awesome. Let's buy that. What else we got? Yeah. Reliable gauntlets. Let's buy that. Okay. I must watch the supplies of it. So. That's good. Daggers, rapers, and stilettos. Well, that's good, but this is better. Daggers, rapiers, and stilettos. So anyone who uses, like, two rapiers would be the best. What if he used, like, two rapier with her? <clears> 2.2. Wait, what? Dexterity, Duelist, Black Blade Hood. Isn't that dual wielding? Oh, look at that. Free base. She's gonna attack like crazy. Okay. Interesting. What about her? Look at this, every 4.3 seconds, we're gonna do average like 40 damage. And she's gonna do average 20 damage every 1.8 seconds. So that's pretty good. We have uh, average, well, 3.1, again this is like 80. So 40, that's pretty good too. Pretty good, pretty good. This actually makes uh, Sotia a decent fighter despite having zero skills. That actually helps her fight better. So that that's that's big. You will come to check on me, yes? Yeah, I, I guess. So no, you need to go. So we need to you take out some Langer fat. Koiki fruit. Koiki fruit. I heard about that. Apparently, uh, Queen Von Kaza always has her mouth full with Koiki. On foot. Yeah, let's just leave the city on foot. Well, we can call it a village. More, more likely a village. Can't say I'm really a huge fan of their system of government. But perhaps this is not the time to overthrow it. I know it's not my business, but... I guess I might just make it my business. And something about the curve of the path ahead of you gives you pause. With the obscured sight lines, you recognize this as a good site for an ambush. At the same time, you don't hear anything out of the ordinary. Actually, you don't hear anything at all. No hum of insects, no rustling of animals, even the air has stifled, stilled. Investigate my surroundings. Actually, people might just uh, completely take it the wrong way if I try to get rid of their uh, way of government. How they, how they, how they run things? Because even the Roparu, 
Are they just they just used to this? <clears throat> Investigate your surroundings. You do it. As you move carefully forward, you spot a massive lug of fats slinking through the wild grove. Even Crunch, the bewildered, towers among the tropical trees as it wears a bleached skull on its head. Sneak closer and observe. You do it. Oh, we're getting attacked. I think is you can really can't activate sneaking in fight. So yeah. See ya. What? Yeah. We just blow him up. you be right screwed. No, let's let's put it there. Okay, didn't cause us any injuries, but may have, uh... Yeah, I think, yeah, we, we got some permanent debuffs because of it. <sighs> Let's rest. Got it. Well, what? Oh, this place is small. Let's leave. So, where do we go? Old Battleground is just uh, something we can just uh, loot and there's nothing here. Tuaku Biha Trail, Bohika Pass. There might be a lot of interactions here. Anyway guys, I guess that's it for now. Thanks for watching and see you next time.